We're here today at the uh, new DPW facility. Um, can you talk about when you guys moved in and how it was getting settled in and uh, kind of about the process of uh, getting this new facility and how long it took to get settled in here? Yeah, well, thanks, Tom. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the citizens of Hopkinton for uh, uh, voting for us to get this nice new facility here. Uh, definitely needed and very welcomed by all the staff down here. Uh, we're finally able to get all that equipment in under one roof. Uh, we were paying you know, a lot of money for some of the bigger trucks that had to sit outside over the years, so now it's nice to have this brand new facility uh, up and running. Uh, we moved in just a little bit, probably after the 1st of January, uh, and it was right about the start we had of the cold snap, so we kind of trying to rush to get everything in here. Uh, took a few weeks to get everything organized. Once we got in, it was still doing some uh, uh, minor work on the building here. Uh, so we've been working kind of around the contractors uh, while they're here, uh, but just it, it's really worked out. Uh, this is a great central location, which is good for us too. It was nice being down at Fruit Street, but it's a lot further to respond when we got to go down to the east side of town. So it's nice to be back at a central location, uh, be able to to operate out of a, a great brand new building here. Excellent, and um, I understand that you've been pretty busy lately. It's been uh, we had a, a huge cold stretch where. It was record-setting uh, cold temperatures. Can you talk about uh, some of the things you guys had to deal with throughout the course of the winter so far? Yeah, sure, sure. As you know, I like to follow the weather, and uh, unfortunately, I don't like to follow it when I have to work in it. <laughs> and we had just a, a brutal stretch, which really started uh, just before Christmas time. And I think we had 10 straight days where the temperatures didn't come out of the 20s, which is the first time that that's happened, at least in the Boston area, in over 100 years. Uh, and what that did to, uh, uh, with us is unfortunately uh, when we get that uh, amount of cold, it just wreaks havoc with the water system. Many of the pipes in town here are old cast iron and unfortunately the, the water in the water tanks is at the t outside temperature. So we had a couple of days, I mean we were below zero, uh, negative three, negative six, and when that cold water just rushes through and hits the cast iron pipe, it unfortunately causes the, uh, the mains to break. Uh, we had a stretch of, I think, three breaks in uh, four days. So the guys, uh, and not only that, but the guys were out dealing with uh, some of the snowstorms we had. So all of the water and sewer guys plow as well. It was a couple of the breaks where they had worked close to 20 something hours after being out all night plowing. We had a couple of breaks come in. Uh, so I, I can't say enough about the guys that work here. They do a great job. Uh, after all those hours, they uh, still came in and helped get the uh, water restored so that we get water back up and running for people. We've also had probably half a dozen or so uh, freeze-ups that we've had to go into people's cellars. We have a machine that thaws the water line out. We have to run it through their pipe outside to the ground because the frost was just so thick from that uh, quick amount of cold that we had there, you know, right through up until about a week or so ago uh, where it finally broke. Uh, unfortunately, looking at the weather trends, it looks like uh, starting next weekend we're going to be not quite to that level, but uh, the cold is coming back. So. That what really gets us is the fluctuating temperature going from uh, cold back to warm, and that's what uh, causes that cast iron to break because it just can't take the shock of the, uh, the change of temperature that quick. Is there anything that people can do to uh, keep their pipes from freezing and, and uh, maintain them when it gets that cold? Yeah, yeah, there is. There's a few calls that we had. Uh, people just always want to remember to shut off their outside faucets. Uh, in the fall, they want to drain those out so that they're not on. We did have a couple calls for those that froze and broke. Uh, those are easy enough to fix by just shutting off inside. But uh, we did have a couple of pipes inside the basement freeze. Uh, there's a lot of older homes in town that have field stone. So you just want to make sure that uh, you want to go down and check that area around your meter and your, your pipes. So uh, if there's any cracks in the foundations there or any holes through there, you want to just make sure you get those sealed up. People that also have uh, known problems in the past to put heating tape on there and plug, plug that in and that will help keep the uh, the line warm enough so that it doesn't freeze for them. All right, terrific. And uh, can you talk about some of the equipment that you have here at the facility as far as uh, snow removal? Yeah, uh, the the guys do a great job. They've got it down to a science. Uh, Mike Manser, who heads the highway department, uh, has a great program in place. And they just, uh, they go out. We have several uh, big trucks that go out with wing plows that uh, plow all the main streets and then they have all, all kinds of smaller pieces we use the back hose uh, down to some of the pickup trucks and then they have uh, I'm not sure the number but there's a, quite a few contractors that they come in that uh, help take care of all the facilities as well and then what they'll do is after a bigger snowstorm like we had I think we had 14 inches in, in one of those storms 
Uh, once the, everything has been pushed back, they'll then go up through the center of town and pick up all that snow and remove it just so people can get in and park uh, their vehicles again. They'll do snow removal from the schools and some of the other areas, and then they'll bring that all down to the snow, bump, snow dump to make room uh, for that next storm that comes in. Uh, one thing I did forget to mention is uh, we also had to deal with flooding. Uh, not only did we have that 14 inches of snow, we had another three inch snowstorm, and then we had a two inch rainstorm with a 60 degree uh, weather coming in, which uh, just inundated not only the sewer system, but our wells. So we, uh, along with the freezing cold, the snow, uh, we had floods. So I think we hit pretty much every major weather category you could in the last two weeks that we had to deal with. Um, what's the procedure as far as flooding? You uh, have machines that just remove the water? Uh, well, we just make sure we have all of our waterways open. Uh, the highway opens up all of their drains. We have certain areas, uh, like down at our wells, that we go and sandbag because we already knew the water was high to begin with. And with everything iced over, there was so much ice frozen in place from the record cold that there was no place for that water to go. So we did have to sandbag around one of our wells and around the doors to our main station to make sure they didn't get in. Uh, on the sewer side, uh, thankfully we had an upgrade to the station a couple years ago. Some bigger pumps were put in, so we were able to keep up uh, pretty well with this storm. In the past, we've had to have pump trucks come down here, and thankfully uh, we didn't have to go that route at that time. We were just you know, able to keep up with what we had with the upgrades, which, uh, again, uh, was just a big help having that stuff in place. Now, you're also a weather spotter for WBZ. And you're pretty good at predicting uh, what weather is to come. Everything you've told me has been pretty much right on so far. Uh, so what is to come? I'm sure everybody wants to know out there, what, what should we expect weather-wise in the yeah. next few weeks, months? Well, i got to say, I can't take credit for that. It's the people that I follow that uh, are pretty good. I watch a lot of the people online, and a lot of the local meteorologists don't like to uh, go too far out uh, because things can change, but uh, a lot of the long-range people are very good at it. And basically what's coming up is there's another really cold chunk of air that's in Siberia that's going to make its way around and come here probably mid, uh, late next week into the weekend. I think right during the Patriots Super Bowl is where it's going to be the coldest in Minnesota. So, <laughs> And then after that, uh, you know, we're supposed to be below temperature uh, for most of uh, February up there if everything falls into place. And they, were, they predicted this last one back in October, so we'll see if they're, they're right again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, hopefully it won't be as cold as it was in early January, that's for sure. Yeah, we were, we were lucky that we had this little break in between because uh, everyone was getting real tired of uh, fixing brakes and plowing, so it's been nice to have this little break. Uh, so hopefully we'll uh, be all rested up if we do get it again. And I have to ask, since you're a sports guy, any Super Bowl predictions? I'm taking the pats. I, I don't know, wanted to prick the points because, uh, you know, they always seem to come back at the end, so... It'll probably be close, but I think the Pats will pull it out again. All right, Eric, thank you very much. All right, thank you, Tom.